Welcome to November. Thank you also for joining me on the first edition of Business Morning for the month on Channels Television. I'm Harriet Agbini. Let's take a look at, of course, uh, the stories that we're welcoming you into the new month with. Today, Buhari's cabinet clocks one year in office. It's exactly uh, this time last year that the president uh, uh, put together his cabinet, talking about the various ministers. And, of course, they immediately set to work trying to fix those very critical ministries that they had. Also this month, we've got our eyes on the $1 billion euro bond flotation by the federal government. The Minister of uh, Finance and, of course, the Debt Management Office have had various roadshows. And, of course, they've talked about the bookkeepers for this particular uh, flotation. We've got that on our plate. And also the pledged estimated 350 billion Naira fiscal spending that the Minister of Finance talked about just last week, already about 700 and, uh, about 750 billion Naira thereabout has been caused this burst for capital expenditure as well as over 1 trillion Naira for recurrent. And this month, about 350 billion is also expected to hit the system. The Debt Management Office, of course, will hold its monthly auction uh, Sometime next week, of course, we'll get those numbers for you. And then the markets are awaiting the third quarter GDP, inflation numbers, as well as the final MPC. October PMI has already come in, taking a look at the one from FBN Quest. And, of course, uh, much later, the Central Bank of Nigeria will also be releasing the PMI for a very critical sector, talking about the manufacturing sector. So, according to the PMI released by FBN Quest just this morning, there's a pickup in October headline to 52.9 from 47.9. According to the research unit, they say there was no significant upswings in the share of respondents reporting a high improved performance across the five sub-indices. Of course, uh, there were four of those indices in positive territory. The output indices and the output sub-index, I beg your pardon, uh, recorded a pickup from 47.5 to 53. The employment sub-index rose considerably from 44 to 49. The new order sub-index grew to 50, grew from 50 to 53. But there was um, there was a, a significant increase in the stocks of purchases as well as suppliers, delivery times sub-indices as recorded. Hot on the plate, militancy. We're talking about, uh, of course, today the president will be meeting with Niger Delta stakeholders, including governors, ministers, traditional rulers and representatives of militant groups. Hot on the plate, militancy in the region, which has led to sharp decline in Nigeria's oil revenue. One of the seven big wins launched by President Mohamed Buhari last week was on Niger Delta and security. And of course, the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Dr. Ibe Kachuku, actually then announced that the president would have this meeting that is expected to hold today in the nation's capital, Abuja. Now, in the first eight months of the year, supply disruptions significantly affected the country's oil exports as four of the nation's five largest crude export streams were totally, or, totally suspended. Just recently, Focado's terminal came back on stream. And so there's been a little bit of pressure in terms of uh, number of cargoes ready for export. But that, of course, is being looked at. According to data from the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, Nigeria has lost over $7 billion. That's around $2 trillion naira to militancy and pipeline vandalism since the beginning of the year and so this meeting hopefully will come up with solutions with how best things can be addressed in that very critical region of nigeria talking about achieving the seven big wins in the short to medium term priorities for nigeria's oil and gas industry and having this very critical meeting with very key stakeholders of the niger delta region is the first step from the executive's office now, 
Thinking outside the box and looking for quick wins in the recession is high on most agendas. The importance of vocational training at this time of economic constraint is a focus of the Nigeria-German Business Community Forum and the German Consulate as well as a delegation of German industry and commerce in Nigeria. So much has been talked about with, in this regard of talk, talking about industrialization and how to improve it, looking at those key players that can help contribute to the key sectors of the economy, particularly manufacturing. And so this particular forum will be talking about that. We've got our eye for that, um, of course. And happening right about now is a policy dialogue on CBN's Forex policy hosted by the Nigerian Economic Summit Group in partnership with the British High Commission under its Prosperity Fund Policy Development Facility Phase 2. And participants include representatives from the Ministry of Trade, Ministry of Finance, Bank of Industry, SMEDAN, Nigerian Customs, and of course the private sector groups. Now they will focus on CBN's recent Forex policy, reviewing short and long term effects on businesses and consumers as well as the overall impact of the policy across the different sectors. So those are the stories we've got on tap for you, and we're keeping our eye on them as they develop, particularly the stories with regards to the president's meeting with the Niger Delta stakeholders that's happening today in the nation's capital. And, of course, uh, also happening now, the policy dialogue on CBN's Forex policy by the NESG and the UK's DFID, as well as the German, Nigeria-German Business Community Forum on the importance of vocational training in a recession. Let's take a look at the markets from yesterday. Very heartbreaking, disappointing numbers coming in from most of the companies quoted in the Nigerian Stock Exchange. And of course, the investors are taking their pound of flesh on those equities listed on the burst. Now, let's take a look at yesterday's uh, trading activities. It was the last trading day for the month of October. And we saw the, the all share index dropping 0.27% following price declines by 29 companies as Beta Suite quarterly earnings continue to pour in as at yesterday. Market capitalization at 9.34 trillion Nara. The losers list was dominated by industrial bellwethers. In percentage terms, we have uh, Transcore being the top loser for yesterday. It shed 9% to close at 91 Kobo. On the other hand, Learn Africa appreciated 9.38% to lead 15 other prize gainers yesterday. It closed at 70 Kobo. The most actively traded yesterday was WAPIC with 26.90 million shares exchanged, valued at 13.46 million naira. We had a volume coming in at 219.89 million, valued at 1.87 billion naira, and total number of deals at 3,955. Let's quickly take a look at where the bonds market finished off yesterday. It was a bearish mood for the last trading day in the month of October, but we saw heavy activities around the bond maturing on the 18th of March 2036, with total transactions at 26 and uh, value at 2.60 billion naira and the price high of 81 point of 81 naira 10 kobo and um, you can see the other bonds that were actively traded yesterday of the seven listed on the FMDQ OTC's markets at the end of the day there were about 76 deals done with a value of 14.30 billion naira the treasury bills market saw Total number of deals coming in at 505, valued at 131.15 billion naira. And the most actively traded were the bills maturing on the 29th of December 2016, 2016 19th of January 2017, 17th of November 2016, and 8th December 2016. So we're still talking about the state of the market and being joined on the program now by Chukuma Anyao, who is the head of, of research at GTI Securities, as we take a look at these very heartbreaking earnings and how the market is shaping up. Well, good morning to you, Chukuma. Thank you so much for joining me. Good morning, Harry. It's great to be here. So let's take a look at some of those numbers that the market has had to, to digest in, let's say, less than seven minutes or so. 
Let's start with Nestle. Now, Nestle's revenue was up about 20% year on year, but profit after tax dropped about 97%. This is one of the most uh, capitalized stock on, listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Talk to us about, um, give us your opinion on how, you know, these results look for you as an investment analyst and, of course, how you think it will be shaping investors' thoughts towards this particular equity. Yeah, Harriet, one of the major things I, I particularly look out for um, in a company that is as mature as Nestle is their capacity to grow earnings, their, their gross earnings, the top line. And I was particularly impressed with the um, level of growth recorded by Nestle in, in the third quarter. It clearly shows that it's a company with um, very viable product offerings and the market penetration and acceptance for its product is still there. Um, for the other reason why the um, bottom line was impaired or we saw that kind of decline in the bottom line, well, that's clearly as a result of the fact that, um, first of all, the company um, had enjoyed pioneer status for a while, um, considering the fact that it recently engaged in expansion. Uh, and also, of course, we have um, the fact that it had a lot of exposure to foreign exchange borrowings, which, um, considering the, the devaluation of the local currency, put pressure on uh, uh, on their capacity to pay back. So it's clearly a reflection of um, the wider economy that really affected bottom line. But I'm particularly impressed about the fact that a company that size is still able to find um, markets and, and is penetrating deeper into the market, growing revenue in double digits. So it's, it's a bittersweet result, but I think overall I'm particularly satisfied uh, with the fact that we st we're still able to see um, strong revenue growth, despite the fact that um, impairments were, were noticed in, in the bottom line. But overall, what that clearly shows you is if you're able to grow your revenue um, with economic um, conditions getting better, it, it will clearly reflect in the company's ability to translate more of its revenue growth to bottom line profitability. And of course, we all know that um, Nestle has no problem with um, operational efficiency. So yeah, it's a company that, uh, despite that um, level of reduction in profit, it's still um, viable for me for the simple fact that it was able to grow revenue in double digits. Hmm. Well, Chukuma, bittersweet for Owando, however, uh, taking a look at the results as announced yesterday to the Nigerian Stock Exchange, turnover increased by 26% uh, from 262 billion recorded for the same period in 2015 to 330 but the company recorded a loss and and even though it seems as if investors have taken it in their stride how do you think in in the coming days particularly listening to what the uh, the group chief executive of Wando plc mr wali Tinubu said they're expecting still better better and improved out in coming into the fourth quarter but for you and taking a look at the stock do you think at this time um, this particular equity is um, is well priced, and judging, of course, uh, by news and developments around Owanda in the last couple of days, in the last couple of months, what are your thoughts? You know, as far as um, being that, uh, priced is concerned, as far as Owando is concerned, everybody is clear on the fact that Owando has huge prospects for upside um, returns in terms of pricing. So, yeah, there is still a lot more to be factored into the pricing from where it is currently. But I think the major issue people have with the company borders largely on um, corporate governance and, and the way they've handled their business um, in terms of um, uh, talking to investors, carrying investors along. And of course, the, the level of, I think at some point, debt exposure was a major problem. And, and now a lot of people are also focusing on the fact that there is an abnormally high um, admin expense charge in, particularly in the third quarter, and it has been pretty consistent. So I, I think Owando has huge prospects for growth. I think the business model is sound. I, I just think that the company needs to get its operational challenges right. Corporate governance needs to be improved more. I think the, the, their ability to carry investors along needs to be improved a lot more so that people can understand where the head of the management is at every point in time. Uh, but that said, I, it's a company that we currently have a hold recommendation on. We are not very up on it at this point, considering the fact that it recently um, mostly diversified most of its business from the downstream. All right, Chukuma. Uh, and, 
and is largely focused more on the upstream business. But for us, it's a whole recommendation. All right. Thank you so much for joining me on the program this morning, of course, sharing your perspectives with us. But Business Morning continues in just a moment. Stay with us.